Good evening from wherever you're watching us tonight. It is the 13th day of February 2023. Glad to have you here with us tonight. Much has happened. We are here to bring you up to speed with just that. We have an interview later on in the bulletin on Bitcoin. Of course, it's Money Monday, so stay tuned for that bulletin. President William Ruto orders the KDF and National Police Service to work together in fighting bandits terrorizing residents of the North Rift. <music> Parliament sittings to resume tomorrow after a long festive break as political debates to take center stage. <music> President William Ruto asked Kenyans to join hands in praying for the country's situation of drought and hunger at Nyayo National Stadium tomorrow. And flower vendors in Nairobi decry lack of customers ahead of Valentine's Day as Kenyans decry high cost of living. Welcome to the broadcast. We are live on Facebook and YouTube at KUTV underscore Kenya. Let's keep you updated. Now, President William Ruto has ordered a joint security operation team to be formed to fight bandits. The team, according to the head of state, will consist of the military and police and will be deployed to all bandit prone areas. The president has also reiterated that elected leaders do not need permission from anyone to perform their duties to Kenyans. President William Ruto has reaffirmed the government's commitment to restoring sanity in the banditry prone regions of the country. Ruto, while speaking during a meeting with Baringo leaders today in Nakuru State House, said the government will use all the available resources to ensure no lives are lost to the bandits who have continued to terrorize parts of the country, especially the North Rift. Nilikuwa Baringo. Nimekuwa hiyo nimelikuwa Turkana. Nilikuwa Samburu. Watu wengi wamepoteza mifugo yao, wamepoteza maisha yao. The president said he has ordered a joint security operation team consisting of the military and police which will start its operation on Tuesday. The team according to the president will be deployed in all bandit-prone areas and will have two duties to flush out bandits and protect schools and communities in these areas. Na tumesema, kwa sababu wale watu wamekua wajeuri, wamekua na kiburi mingi. From tomorrow, we are moving into that area and we will not leave that area until every illegal gun has been returned until all children have gone to school, until we have stopped this menace. Na kwanzia kesho, tutakuwa na polisi pale, tutakuwa na wanajeshi pale. The head of state also launched the affordable housing project in Bondeni, Nakuru East Town, where he said that elected leaders do not need permission from anyone to perform their roles to Kenyans. Hatuitaji ruhusa ya mutu mwingine yeyote. Ruhusa tuko nayo tayari kutoka uchaguzi wa wananchi. On Saturday, leaders from the Rift Valley region called on President Ruto to order the deployment of military officers to Kerio Valley and other banditry prone areas of the country to restore normalcy. The counties of Baringo, Turkana and Elgeo Marakwet have been worst hit by insecurity due to cases of unending banditry and cattle rustling that have left several people dead, including police officers. Jacqueline Wanjiru, KUTV. 
Now, the National Assembly and the Senate are expected to return to their sessions on Tuesday 14th with realignment politics expected to take center stage following President Ruto's meetings with a faction of opposition leaders. President Ruto plans to advance his legislative agenda as the National Assembly and Senate resume sessions. The 13th parliamentary sessions are expected to resume on Tuesday 14th. This is after a long festive break with the bicameral house whose majority of members belong to the Kenya Kwanzaa administration having a full plate when they resume the sitting. The arraignment politics will take center stage, particularly following President Ruto's meeting with the function of opposition leaders from both the Jubilee and the Orange Democratic Movement parties in what has weakened the opposition. The members include Adan Kayan, Member of Parliament Eldas, Sabina Chege, nominated Member of Parliament, Yusuf Hassan, Member of Parliament Kamukonji, John Waluke, Member of Parliament Sirisia, Samuel Arama, Member of Parliament Nakuru West, Rachel Nyamai, Member of Parliament Kitui South, Irene Njoki, Member of Parliament Bahati, Margaret Kamar, Bambala, Member of Parliament Omari Shurie, Senator Kisumu Tom Ojiende, Felix Oduor, Member of Parliament Langata, Mark Nyamita, Member of Parliament Uriri, Karori Omondi, Member of Parliament Suba South, Gideon Ochanda, Member of Parliament Bondo, Elisha Odiambo, Member of Parliament Jem, Paul Abur, Member of Parliament Rongo, and Walter Owino, Member of Parliament Awendo. Key pending business for the National Assembly include consideration of the supplementary budget that seeks to reduce borrowing by 68 billion shillings. The Senate will also be determining the formula for sharing revenue amongst counties. Tax politics will also play a role in the two legislative chambers, largely due to President Ruto's emphasis that every Kenyan must fulfill their tax responsibilities to ensure the government operates effectively. In the Senate, the spotlight will be on Nandi Senator Samson Gerard Gay, who aims to amend the Estate Duty Act by deleting the tax exemption provision for the estate of former President Jomo Kenyatta and Daniel Arap Moy in order to ensure effective government operations. Other key legislative proposals expected before the House include a bill to entrench NGCDF and National Government Affirmative Fund in the Constitution after the court disbanded the previous CDF fund. Now, every year on February 13, International Condom Day seeks to remind the public that condoms prevent sexually transmitted diseases, that is STDs and unwanted pregnancy. It's also a day to promote the use of condoms to provide protection from HIV. This year's theme is yours, mine and ours, as Caroline Kimwale reports. Condoms have been recorded to be 98% effective in preventing both sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. On February 13, a day before Valentine's Day, the world marks International Condom Day to sensitize both singles and lovers on the importance of using protection. The day was established by the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, a U.S.-based nonprofit founded in 1987 in response to the AIDS epidemic. The organization celebrates the holiday by giving out free condoms. It is a day that seeks to remind the community that condoms prevent sexually transmitted diseases, unwanted pregnancy, and also to encourage their use in preventing the HIV infection. There are different types of condoms that people are encouraged to use, including the male and female condoms, both used for the same purpose. A recent report by the National Bureau of Statistics shows that female condoms are unpopular contraceptives in Kenya. Among sexually active unmarried women, 20% use male condoms, 16% use injectables, and 11% use implants. Condoms have also been reported as one of the simplest and accessible forms of contraceptives around and is the only one that can also prevent STIs. Each year, there is a theme that is geared towards spreading the message of prevention being better than cure. This year, the pict is yours, mine, and ours. Caroline Kimwele, KUTV.
Indeed, prevention is better than cure. Now, the World Radio Day, which is celebrated on February 13, was commemorated in Kenya at the Technical University of Mombasa with the theme of radio preaching peace in the society. And as Edward Nyamu reports, the day is observed to preserve the importance of radio as well as to encourage decision makers to provide access to information through radio. World Radio Day is celebrated every year on February 13th to mark the important role that radio plays in the society. This being the 12th World Radio Day, a lot has been improved in terms of radio transmission and coverage. In Kenya, the Media Council of Kenya led the commemoration of this day in the Technical University of Mombasa, where it highlighted on the importance of radio in the community and the steps that has been made in improving it in terms of technology. Indeed, there is a rediscovery of radio in the context of new ICTs, particularly in the realization that technology has, en has enhanced rather than replaced radio. According to Mombasa Governor Abdul Somad Sharif Nasir, the government is working towards improving infrastructure to ensure that access to information will be seamless and effective. My clarion call to journalists and media attendants is that a stick to the code of ethics and the code for the conduct and practice of journalism as enshrined in the Media Council Act of 2010. Dr. James Njogu, the Kenya National Communication of UNESCO representative, noted that radio has played a big role in maintaining of peace not only in Kenya but worldwide. Due to this, it has made the widest geographical reach and the greatest audience compared with the internet, television and newspaper. The theme of the World Radio 2023 is Radio and Peace. Radio na amani. Peace is at the heart of UNESCO. Humanity is celebrated through radio in all its diversity and it provides a platform for democratic disclosure. According to statistics by the Media Council of Kenya, Radio coverage is at 78%, with TV leading with 80 and newspaper with 30. Edward Nyamu, KUTV. Happy World Radio Day to our brothers and sisters in the radio. Now we are taking a very fast short break at this point. Up next is an interview on Bitcoin, so stay tuned. Vera Beauty and Fashion College is focused on being the leading technical and the vocational training institute in the region. Our team Alikuwa amepika kitaa. Yes sir. So. Rufus. Rufus. Hi mambo. Umeshindaje leo? Ala hata nimesikia pole sana. Karibu tena na tena na tena. 
Haya basi. Mati umempata? Haya basi. Nimempata pia. wali unapopika inatakana uokuo uko hapo Inipo kanga kaunti ya Kilifi Mangabazi Gede stream live mitindo ya Kipwani on our KUTV Facebook page every Saturday 4 pm Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us now. Let's continue with our coverage. So technological advancements and the digital era has seen the rise of many things we couldn't imagine. Cryptocurrencies, which are digital or virtual currencies, are now a popular commodity and mediums of exchange. Today we'll be focusing on one cryptocurrency that is the Bitcoin with Rufus Kamau. Rufus is a finance expert and a lead market analyst at FX Pesa which is a financial markets brokerage firm that's regulated by the SMA. Welcome back, Rufus. Glad to have you here tonight. Uh, thank you, thank you. I, I hope I did your, I hope you did your, your introduction justice. So we can just move on, yeah? Um, uh, one question though. Yeah. Uh, I work with FX Pesa, uh -huh. uh, which is a financial market broker that is a license for Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, uh, let's just dive right into a discussion of the night. So briefly explain to us what is Bitcoin and how does it work? So, uh, for example, Bitcoin is a uh, very uh, simple and easy digital currency. Mm -hmm. So it's an innovation that happened back in the years 2009 by an anonymous entity. We don't know whether it's one person or many people, uh, but they call themselves so it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system that allows you to send mm -hmm. and receive value without having trust and intermediary. So for the majority of the transactions that we do digitally, uh, there is always a need to transact and entire trust and intermediary. For instance, if I send you some money via MPESA, then I have to trust the intermediary in this case with this price. Mm -hmm. So if I have to send you some money by bank, then I have to trust the bank. But then with Bitcoin, you don't have to trust anyone, and uh, therefore it ensures the security and also uh, the uh, freedom to transact between one person and another. Mm -hmm. Now, you have mentioned the security of these Bitcoins. Unlike currencies like the Kenya shilling, which is under regulation of the CBK, Bitcoins don't have a regulatory authority and they are not traded by banks. So, how safe are these currencies really? 
When we talk about uh, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. uh, it's secured by what you call a uh, blockchain. And this is basically a public ledger, a digital uh, ledger that is supported by the people who support the Bitcoin network or what you call the finance. So we have the people running their own ledger around the world. So whenever you send a uh, transaction from one person to another, then it's supported by this ledger. So it makes it the most secure with the system. Mm -hmm. But then, when it comes to your own personal Bitcoin, let's say you have some Bitcoin uh, with the network, then you have your own key that's available to buy transactions. And uh, this is very important to be of uh, keeping your Bitcoin secure. So what this means is a very similar idea with a holding cash. So whenever you have your own cash in the pocket or at home, then it's very similar with uh, the way you hold Bitcoin. So if I expose your cash uh, to other people, then it's a get stolen. So the same case applies to Bitcoin. So if your keys are exposed to other people, then well, they can get stolen. So there is uh, a personal responsibility for people to protect their currencies. Uh, and the same case applies for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Now, stability of a currency is one critical aspect when considering to use it as a medium of exchange. The Bitcoin, however, has over the years shown it has a high volatility. So in this regard, what would make one choose it over stable currencies like the US dollar? So uh, when you compare Bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, with a traditional currency, uh, Bitcoin experience uh, since it's converted back into the 14th year, they are having Bitcoin. Uh, when you compare the same with the fiat currencies, such as the US dollar, uh, the UK pound, you know that they have been around for much that time. So it's a new technology that is getting wider with adoption. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a very new technology, then it, it's exposed to higher volatility. Mm -hmm. However, when you zoom out and look at the economy, uh, there is a what we call a predictable uh, monetary policy. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the monetary policy, compare the same with uh, central funds, then you would realize that the monetary pace that is open by central funds, such as the US, mm -hmm. keeps on expanding, increasing the supply of currency. And this happens over and over and over again, which ensures a longer term depreciation of the currency over time. Mm -hmm. So if you look at uh, how much, uh, let's say, $100 was buying uh, 20, 30 years ago, uh, that uh, amount of goods or services has gone uh, down, 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 and uh, right now the price is not a mm -hmm. The same here applies to Ken Chile. If you look uh, way back, let's say, 30, 40 years from now, mm -hmm. uh, the Ken Chile was uh, having a very strong privacy power, but since the central bank has been increasing the monetary base year by year by year, then you realize that the same amount of money cannot buy as much, uh, as much uh, products and the services so what this means is that uh, if you're using a fiat currency as a long-term way for a solid value, then you are assured that you're going to lose value over time since the central bank can avoid the temptation of this business. Mm -hmm. So the Bitcoin uh, acts with a different policy that is a limited only to 1 billion coins, so there will never be more than Bitcoin. Uh, the rate at which the Bitcoins are paid by the it's also very predictable for mm -hmm. the Bitcoin for a long term, let's say four, five, ten years, then you are guaranteed that your value will get there. All right, now Bitcoin, you have mentioned that Bitcoin is indeed very young. So Kenya was ranked the leading in Africa and fourth in the world in terms of cryptocurrency ownership. This is was this was in mid last year by reports published by the UN. So what could be attributed to this high cryptocurrency uptick of 8.5% of the Kenyan population? Um, there's uh, quite a number of factors uh, that would answer that question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm still having a flu, so apologies. So, uh, one thing is that Kenya has been uh, on the front line in terms of integration. Mm -hmm. uh, we have easy access to electricity, uh, smartphones, and we have a very educated uh, data. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that we have a very large number of young people. And uh, in addition to this, uh, we know that Kenya has been facing a big picture in terms of. Mm -hmm. So the economy is not expanding at the same rate as the 
Richtung, könnte man das Name durch die Runde lang gucken, also die Windkraft pollinieren, dass es quasi so ein Freitreten ist. So, also die Leute von diesen, die auf viel auch auf die Anzeige von den Politikern sprechen. Und da auch ein anderes Problem, der sich fest ist, ist, habe ich fast an das, was ich auf der Seite habe. So, der Riesen, aber der Leute von Mof, kennen ja uns das, aber hat da in jedem Sinne auf jeden Fall, was man sagt, der Held, dass er auf jeden Fall hat, als Transformation, All right, now, Rufus, there is disadvantages to everything. Now, what are the pros and cons, cons of Bitcoin? Yes. So, uh, the first thing mm -hmm. is that uh, Bitcoin is uh, relatively uh, new technology. Mm -hmm. And it's still available, but it's not. A lot of our hackers uh, find it very interesting mm -hmm. uh, target people on the way to so it can be a very easy way to for it to use the most here. So uh, another thing is that uh, if you are just getting in into the system, uh, there's also a large number of farmers around the world who will target and expecting beginners to actually learn and get to understand this technology. Mm -hmm. So they find themselves a big victim of uh, hackers as well as uh, bad players in the space. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you have mentioned hackers. Um, hackers can easily access Bitcoin. So cryptocurrencies are unregulated and they can be easily used to carry out fraudulent transactions. How can this be counted and maybe what needs to be done to curb such cases? So uh, when it comes to hacking, mm -hmm. I uh, Bitcoin is one of the best ones that have ever been hacked in petrol. So it's very secure. But then, from the client side, if you don't take the necessary precautions, uh, remember I mentioned you, uh, you have your integrated key, which allows you to start a transaction. Mm -hmm. So if that key is full, then you uh, use a Bitcoin to have a target to a site rather than targeting the uh, network. So in terms of regulation, mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin was designed to be regulation proof. Mm -hmm. So in the way that uh, it is uh, purely decentralized, mm -hmm. so by being decentralized, it's a target. So, are uh, nice other cryptocurrencies out there that have a uh, network in party and the coin may be controlling the token mm -hmm. or Bitcoin uh, is not so it makes it a uh, pretty secure chain. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw it happening, uh, I think, uh, last year when, uh, when we saw uh, some Canadian trackers uh, preventing the COVID 19 restriction and uh, the government decided to ban uh, transactions in Bitcoin but somehow it could not access So it made it a very secure way for people to express themselves and also to protect their rights. So even if the government uh, opinionated and crypto crime, let's say block uh, access, mm -hmm. some, uh, some uh, activities such as uh, some people who are trying to riot or hold a government incentive, then the why able to transact without getting banned. Mm -hmm. Now, in Kenya, Bitcoins and cryptos in general have been used as an investment option, I beg your pardon, especially among the youth. So are Bitcoins a good way to invest money and get returns? Uh, yes. So uh, I would say yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the key things of the show today is that uh, the price of Bitcoin tends to be very profound. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you are trading or let's say investing in Bitcoin for the short run, uh, there is a good chance that you can buy it today and then tomorrow it's down as that printing. The ground is not very good for the return run. However, on the wrong run, if on the wrong run, if you look at the position that I've shown and because of Bitcoin, then there's a very predictable cycle of uh, adoption. Uh, the 
mean they hold so uh, very empathy, but uh, on the short run, if, uh, if you don't know what that means, uh, there's good chance. All right, now, the IMF in December last year had reported that cryptocurrencies could generate risks in emerging economies as it recommended regulation of the crypto market. So what is currently the situation and what do you foresee in terms of regulation of these currencies, which include bitcoins? So uh, when you look at the crypto market, is going. Mm -hmm. So bitcoin being the first cryptocurrency uh, led to the innovation of uh, other cryptocurrencies that were much more centralized. Mm -hmm. So remember, I gave a description that Bitcoin is centralized. Mm -hmm. So we saw the rise of uh, Ethereum, uh, Binance coin, and Ethereum coin. And uh, most of these coins tend to pass uh, what you call the Harvey test. Mm -hmm. So the Harvey test is a basically a jurisdiction uh, uh, case in the US uh, that basically describes what uh, financial security is. So uh, in a simple term, mm -hmm. so let's look uh, it involves a common entity where investors receive their money, and then they, these investors will accept a reasonable uh, profit to that investment out of the activity of others. So some of these uh, like exchanges, such, such as Binance, we have seen FTX, which for us are uh, later last year, mm -hmm. uh, they tend to qualify for that, and uh, it's very important that these uh, financial companies Yes, regulated and necessary setting mm -hmm. so that investors can be protected in those areas. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's uh, very important that uh, some of these cryptocurrencies that tend to pass the habit test or mm -hmm. their coins or tokens that they offer to provide our securities, they get the necessary licensing and operate within uh, the legal boundaries. Mm -hmm. Now, Rufus, before we let you go, for someone considering to use the bitcoins, how do they get started? So uh, the first big part is uh, to get educated. Mm -hmm. uh, you never want to invest in something you have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. So I would advise that go to a quite free online content gateway. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do podcasts for you to get a lot of people as well as reading, mm -hmm. uh, such as a uh, lot uh, of what is called uh, a book from Safe Team mm -hmm. uh, called The Bitcoin Standard. It's really good. So there's more books out there, and I wouldn't want to recommend a lot of them. So once you understand what you are doing, mm -hmm. then it's very uh, find a way for the Bitcoin to be a mobile application uh, or a wallet or a Bitcoin device, uh, such as what you call a ledger. Mm -hmm. Then you need to find a market where Bitcoin is sold, uh, such as uh, an exchange like, uh, like uh, Binance. So once you get to the exchange, buy a Bitcoin and then transfer that to your wallet. And uh, hold what the Bitcoin is for that asset to our. On the other hand, mm -hmm. if you try to participate in Bitcoin by security in the price, mm -hmm. then there's a regulated space for that. Uh, you can trade what's called a CFD product, or a derivative product to the Pesa. You'll be able to speculate on the price and then get the benefit from the change in the price. Mm -hmm. Now, thank you so much, Rufus, once again for making time for us tonight. That is Rufus Kamau. Um, a finance expert, Rufus is also a research analyst, a lead market analyst at FX PESA. I bet he has talked about that. So we are taking another short break at this particular point. We're coming back with more stories. Stay with us. I'll be host DiCaplo. I'm here to give you various workouts. I'll be having different trainers. Uh, we'll have Zumba classes. We'll have aerobics classes. We'll have uh, box exercise. We'll have cutter box. Just name them. <laughs> Every
every Thursday from 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. Keep it locked. Make sure we keep fit. And that's it from me to you. Let's be fit. the government stakeholders can uptake the solutions. Those small acts multiplied by, by millions of us will help make a difference in the world at the end of the day. It's just a slight behavior change that we need and you find that it serves us a bit, a bit uh, more than you put in. And, and that's the goal. We want to live a better world than we found. Because at the rate we are going, it's, it's, it's dire. We will secure the planet for future generations. Lola is an app that gives you a chance to watch videos, listen to audios, and read articles wherever you are for free. Motivational stories, dramas, campus life, technology, lifestyle, adventure, sports, academics, jobs, entertainment and more. Download Lola now on Play Store. All you need, you got Lola. I'm a freshman in Kenyatta University. This is all what I've heard about Canvas. Canvas is full of freedom. <laughs> Ni cumulative. Which is why you book a gun if one. I'm a first year student and uh, I mostly hang out at shopping center. I'm a arboretum. And what I tell first years is it's never too late to start being serious. Mitindo ya kipwani Uo yangu wa sene Stream live Mitindo ya Kipwani on our KUTV Facebook page every Saturday 4 p.m. Welcome back. Let's continue with our coverage. Now, President William Ruto is expected to lead the nation in a national prayer tomorrow at Nyai National Stadium in Nairobi. The purpose of that prayer is to pray for the country's economy as well as prayer for the nation to get rain, especially at this time when the country is experiencing extreme drought. President William Ruto asked Kenyans to avail themselves in large number for a national prayer service at Nyayo National Stadium that is expected to take place tomorrow. President Ruto at a Thanksgiving service in Akuru County on Sunday asked all Kenyans from different parts of the country to hold prayers tomorrow, Tuesday to pray for rains as well as praying for the nation's economy. 
nataka ni waombe mumesikia ya kwamba maombi ya jumanne tarehe kumi na ine na waomba watu wote wa dini zote katika taifa letu la Kenya tukiwa mahali popote na wale wataweza kuja nyayo stadium wa kuja nyayo stadium on Tuesday 14th President Ruto has asked Kenyans to come out in large numbers tomorrow and advise those who will not be able to attend the prayers at Nyayo National Stadium to join other places of worship. We would like to ask all those of us who are mistreated and persecuted in one way or another to have a heart to, give, to forgive our tormentors and we move forward. The drought situation remains critical in the country due to the late onset and poor performance of much anticipated October to December 2022 short trains coupled with four previous consecutive failed rainfall seasons currently nine counties in the country are in the alarm drought phase while the teens are in the alert drought phase wilson tobiko q tv right keep in mind that valentine's day is at nyai national stadium tomorrow so in the wake of valentine's day celebrations expected to start tomorrow flower vendors as well as gift vendors are hopeful that the day of love will bring them profit even as kenyans struggle with the high cost of living however kenyans continue to buy gifts for their loved ones to celebrate the long-awaited day ruth wenjuru went to the streets of nairobi and filed this report it is that time of the year once again when love is celebrated across the country. The long-awaited Valentine's Day is just a day away, and flower vendors continue with preparations to sell flowers to lovers across the country. The Kenya Flower Commission, through its CEO Clement Tulezi, had predicted a rise in flower prices, citing that the cost of farm inputs, freight charges, as well as water and electricity has gone up. We meet Justina Mweni, a flower vendor at the city market in Nairobi. Justina tells us that compared to last year, the prices of the flowers have gone up, blaming the situation on the high cost of living. She further added that people don't buy flowers like they used to. The flowers are higher from when they come from the farm. So even us, we just need to pandisha praise your flowers. This year, very tough. Yeah. Uh, but not buying flowers like they used to. Frederick Kamau, who is a gift vendor on the other hand, said that they started setting up on Saturday last week and customers have been closing in. Sunday akuku wana kazi sana, but leo leo watu ametokea tokea. Eh leo leo kuko sawa. Venye chat inaendelea. Kesho naona kama kutakuwa na kazi. Ju hata kulinganisha na na hizo Valentine zingine. Hizi siku zingine akuku wangi sana. Patrick Gatimu, whom we met in the process of buying gifts for his wife, notes that due to the high cost of living, he has to consider whether his family has basic needs before buying any gifts. Anisia Karanja, who was also buying gifts for her children, said that the commodities have become expensive compared to last year. Kwa hivyo minaona kama Kenya itakuwa tunaweza kupunguza some stuff. Yeah? We can do this. We can we can we can have time for love. The price are high. Okay. Yeah, almost three times. Now I'm buying for only one. I have three children. I'm... As Kenyans continue to struggle with the high cost of living, flower vendors as well as gift vendors are hoping that just like the previous years, their products will be bought at a higher rate. Ruth Wanjiru for KOTV, Nairobi County. Thank you, Ruth Wanjiru, for that report. Now, elsewhere, Migori fishmongers have thanked the county government for establishing a fish market space at Marindi Market for easy operation and improvement of the county's economy. They have also expressed their pride in the leaders they elected, citing that the county government is working towards the development of their county. This follows wrangles that had ensued in the area last week after the fishmongers were evacuated from their business area. In the leadership of their chair lady Miss Florence Oyombe, the fishmongers thanked the county government of Migori for establishing a fish market at Marindi. 
Florence encouraged those who are carrying on with their business outside the market to join the rest of them as the market space is sufficient. Shukuru gavana wetu mheshimiwa Dr. Chila yako na mawaziri wenye walichagua. Tunashukuru sana. The County People's Assembly leader Charles Odiedem, while acknowledging the efforts of the county government in establishing the market, mentioned that the place was initially a swamp flooded with water, but is now dry and installed with electricity and water. It was, uh, it was like a river. The, 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 the water was flowing, like uh, the muddy water was flowing. And now uh, the place is dry. We thank uh, the, the, the Minister of Trade. We also thank the Ministry of uh, Water. While expressing their joy, the fishmongers mentioned that they have benefited from the establishment of the market since water and electricity has been installed to enable them work until late in the night. Sasa tumeona vizuri sisi kama wenye watu wenye wanausa samaki ambayo ni mbichi. Tumepata faida na tena tumefaidika kabisa. While applauding the county government, the fish traders expressed their pride for their leaders, citing that they elected the right leaders to lead their county. This happens days after the county government of Migori relocated the traders from their previous location in a bid to restore sanity in the county by organizing the county management. The county government had promised to establish designated markets for fishmongers and other traders. Ruth, Wanjiru, KU. TV. All right, allow us to take another a short break at this point. You're coming back with sports news, so stay with us.
Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Now in sports, Kenya's World Cross Country Championships team is en en route to Australia for the global event that will be held in Bathurst starting from Saturday this week. The team, which consists of 28 athletes, 13 women and 15 men, left the country today morning and is expected to land in Bathurst tomorrow. Team manager Patrick Arandu say that the athletes are ready to put in a good show after a long training in Kigari Embu. During the last edition of the World Cross Country Championship, Championships held in Aarhus, Denmark in 2019, Kenya bagged three medals, two gold medals and bronze. The national women's basketball team Lioness today arrived in Kampala, Uganda for the 2023 International Basketball Federation's Women Afro Basket Zone 5 qualifiers. The team comprises 12 players, 8 local based and 4 foreign based from the 27 provisional squad that had been named last month by the Kenya Basketball Federation. The qualifiers have attracted five teams and will begin tomorrow Tuesday, stretching to February 19 at the MTN Lugogo Arena. Host Uganda, Egypt, Kenya, South Sudan and Rwanda will be fighting for the ticket. The winner will represent the region in the All Africa Games in August, Accra, Ghana and Afro Basket Championship in December, Kigali, Rwanda. And finally, in sports, Kenya Rugby Union KRU has entered into a partnership with Alimali Sports Management to help commercialize the national women's rugby team. The Lioness, the three-year partnership, will ensure that the Lionesses receive the much-needed support to ensure smooth running of the team and participation in circuits and tournaments that will improve their overall ranking and exposure. Speaking at the official signing ceremony in Nairobi, KRU Chairperson Odu Gangler outlined the squad's impressive performance and ability to produce top-notch professional players despite limited resources and myriad of challenges they encounter. Alright, that brings us to the end of our bulletin tonight. Many thanks indeed for keeping us company. Be sure to join me again tomorrow for the prime time news. Happy Valentine's. So my name is Anne Odid. I'm in the company of Ivan Sodiambo is our sign language interpreter tonight. Have a good night and see you tomorrow.